This is PT Pro Talk, the podcast for physical therapists who want to improve their clinical skills and be more successful. I am Ariana Parks, physical therapist and your host, and today I'm joined by Louis Stack, and he's going to talk about the development of balanced products for the physical therapy industry. Louis is the founder and president of Feeder First and has been leading the world to a better balance since 1985. In our discussion today, you are going to learn about the development of balance training tools over the years for injury prevention, athletics, family fitness, and active office. Lois also talks about how PTs can use the products in different ways to help rehab patients. So, if that sounds interesting to you, please check this episode out, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and share with other clinicians if you might benefit from this information. I hope you enjoyed the show. PT Pro Talk podcast is only possible with the support of the forward-looking and innovative companies like Systems for PT, the Do Anything, Anytime EMR. Systems for PT develops systems for clinics so you can focus on your patients. Go to systemsforpt.com to schedule a demo today. Looking for the highest quality equipment for your clinic? Turn to Fitter First. Our wobble, rocker, and slant boards are all assembled in North America to meet the demands of a busy professional clinic. Designed to adjust in seconds and made from the highest quality materials. Get the best Canadian-made rehab and balance products for your clinic. Order online for your clinic or for your clients. Ground shipping anywhere in North America. Visit fitter1.com. That's F I T T E R, the numeral one.com. Hi, Lois. Welcome to PT Pro Talk. How are you today? I'm very good this morning. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well and I'm ready for our conversation today. So let's just get started talking a little bit about yourself, your background for the ones that don't know you and what you do. Well, I'm up here in Calgary, Alberta, and it's another sunny day in Calgary where we have usually about 300 plus days of sun a year. I was born here, but I've uh, had the great pleasure of traveling to over 1,100 trade shows around the world, as well as five years of World Cup ski racing. So I've I've seen the world, but I keep coming home to my hometown of Calgary because I love it here and we're right by the Rocky Mountains. And uh, I grew up skiing there and I've always enjoyed, you know, coming home to ski or skiing anywhere else in the world that I get a chance to. Awesome. And we know that your story is related to all the skiing that you had in your life, right? So tell us what happened there and and how did that impact your life today? Well, it's uh, basically, (laughs) I'm the youngest of seven kids and um, my mother raised the seven of us and I ended up being the last and the biggest and uh, no one in my family was over six feet, but I was at 14 years old, I was grew up to be six, four. And I also had size 14 feet, which was very large. Uh, my giant big toes. And, uh, I, I was just basically too big as one of my nephews said, <laughs> and I couldn't help, but wear, um, I wore Birkenstocks most of my life because I was so large and shoes never fit me very well. So I finally found some ski boots that were size 13 and they're called Hanson's and they were not big enough for me, but I jammed my feet in anyways. And although this is funny because I have it here, I, that no, not everyone's listening, but this picture shows the ski boots of the Hansons back in 1976. That's what we wore in skiing was just little tiny shorts, long hair for a helmet and big, huge honking ski boots. And that was up at Lake Louise, still my favorite resort. And it says the boots that destroyed the feet that started the company. So it really did wreck my feet, uh, Marina. And then I had a knee surgery shortly after that. And I, at 23 years old, I lost my balance and I truly had a very big balance disorder at that time. And I made the decision to find a way to improve my balance. And I learned about the ski machine uh, out of Austria and I decided to make my own in my backyard with my brother. And we actually borrowed $3,000 and found some old models of other ski machines around Calgary and designed our own and started showing it to physical therapists. And that led me to starting this company and selling them out of the back of my car. And I would go up north to Edmonton and up to UBC and up to U of A and around to different physical therapy schools and showing it to them. And it became the first functional fitness product long before sports medicine clinics and long before, you know, there was functional closed chain exercise. People like Gary Gray, Vladimir Yonda, 
Shirley Saruman, all these well-known, you know, um, forefathers of, of functional fitness were users of the pro fitter or known originally as the ski fitter because it was a cost effective. It was closed chain, very dynamic and allowed more than 20 closed chain exercises for upper core and lower body and sold for under $500. You know, it kind of checked all the boxes. So instead of Kincom or Cybex machines, clinics were looking and saying, wow, $500, look at all the things this does and it's all closed chain. And, uh, so I quickly became, A, I benefited from it myself, and B, I drove all over the Pacific Northwest and down to California in my van. You know, we'd build 30 of them, put them in the van, and away I'd go and knock on doors of clinics and sell them and do lots of trade shows, and that's how Fitter got started. That's awesome how, like, your personal experience influenced your, your decisions and the drive that you had to create something, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then, so how how did you start creating that? So you, you had an idea from like Austria that you said, and then you started designing like a product like similar to that. Like how did I, the idea came? Well, I saw different versions. Like I'd seen one from the 60s. It was an arc with rubber band on it. And that it became ultimately a competitor of mine called the Skier's Edge, which never, it's successful and it's now $6,000, but it never succeeded in the athletic training or the physical therapy world. It didn't have independent functioning, uh, sort of rotating, flexing foot pads, and it didn't have the rocking base like ours has. So it wasn't nearly so proprioceptive. Um, it's more of a mechanical device that simulates the motion of skiing that you hold on to poles for your balance. Where the fitter is designed to enhance your balance, you, you generally don't hold on to anything. It's stable enough that you can step onto it, free balance, maybe with a spot or depending on your balance level at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can just move a very small amount side to side with rhythm. And as you get more confident, you can go further, but it, it respects your own uh, ability to travel within your own comfort zone. And when people step on it, it immediately, because of the independent foot pads and the way it rocks and moves, the user displays their own neutral position, which often is rotated or with a weak ankle. And, you know, to the therapist looking at the user, it, it, displays natural position of the user and also which then displays their compensations where the other machines out there covered the compensations by using poles and by having fixed foot pads and you know all those types of things so we really designed it to help the therapist see what the user was doing and the reason i did that is because i used therapists as my teachers i would take it to therapists all the time and ask them what should it do what does it need to do what are you looking for you know, you guys have always been my teachers at combined sections. Just uh, recently in uh, San Diego, I told all the students, I said, you are my future teachers. And t today you are my teachers. Tell me what you think of this new product or I'm working on this thing. Because someone said you need this kind of thing. Tell me, is this what you're looking for? So for 37 years now, the therapists and surgeons and the uh, athletic trainers, I listened to you guys to find out what I should be pursuing for the future. So thank you for being my teacher. That's awesome. And I saw that like your, your product, it has a lot of other um, options to be used other than just the skin, right? That first. Oh, yeah. uh, and so you can use in many different ways. Would you just tell us a little bit about the different options? Because I know that pretty much every clinic has one or some of the products um, so what are other possibilities that they can use that for? Well, the, the pro fitter itself is certainly a, a lateral side to side movement that you use the anatomical trains similar to golf or tennis or skiing or any lateral anatomical train of muscular, you know, recruitment, um, you know, out of the seven trains is this is, the, it's used for the lateral movement trains. Um, and most products aren't used laterally and that's not a common product, but a that's lot of right. sports do have a lateral component to them. So it's got a big, big application there. Um, in this case, the most common one is the feet go together, but then you can put one foot on the end cap and do independent single leg that's work. Right. You can do ab adduction on one leg. You can do a glute kickback or quad extension. 
Uh -huh. um, again, you're free balancing and standing, so you're always using your core stability and your proprioceptive uh -huh. system. So you're always using your neutralizers and your stabilizers. Uh, you can isolate those out if you want to use the balance aids or use you know balance uh, bars if you're trying not to engage those muscle groups. But you know, the purpose of this product is normally to engage the stabilizers and the neutralizers, so more of a real-life situation. There's a platform that goes on top that allows plantar dorsiflexion, um, 45 degree angle, sitting for the core and the obliques. And then you can do a lot of closed chain shoulder work. Because it has six settings, you can instantly pop um, any of the various cords on or off from either above or below by just flipping the 25 pound machine over and you know, adding cords or just popping them off from above through the skate. And so you can go from really about a 40 pound body weight resistance up to a 350 pound body weight resistance um, and make it stable. A lower setting is more balanced, a higher setting is more strength. So you can get it down low enough to put it up on a, on a, a treatment table and do closed chain shoulder work or both uh -huh. arms and do scapula work and things like that. So it's Gosh, very, yeah. very, just like a physical therapist, very, very versatile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can be very creative and use with a lot of di in a lot of different ways to different body parts to different goals, change the resistance and and just be creative, adapt to what you need. Yeah, very early, uh, Marina, in the whole game, I, I was told by more than one physical therapist that uh, if you can't change the setting or the resistance or the application in under five seconds, then don't bother because you're too busy to waste your time. Or if the parts if there's too many little parts, then don't bother. So you made sure the fitter when you had one platform on or off and all the cords stayed on it when you changed them. And then I also only designed our balance boards, um, unlike the BAPS board that had, you know, the big balls that came off and then you yeah, put them over right. here and they took it off here yeah, and you put right. it over here. And, you know, it took too long. Um, even Gary Gray told me that. Um, so, you know, our ba balance boards, you just turn the ball. It stays on, it's got, you know, three settings and nothing comes off of it. So you just turn them instantly like a little clock and you can oh, change man. the settings from 10, 12 to 15 degrees or 15, 17 and 20 degrees. And it was the same thing. Again, my teacher, I listened as a good student and did what they told me to do. It took me some time to figure it out. And then I improved upon it because I knew I could after a while. But again, you know, you have to understand the needs of your customer. And by listening to you guys at over 1100 shows over the years, I've been able to improve my products based on the needs of, of, you know, the physical therapist who is my customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, and then the, the first product that you launched, it was the Pro Feeder, the Ski Feeder. Yeah. Was that the first and main product? Um, and how would you go back and like, and kind of like adapt and change the products? You, did, you would do yourself like, you have to have a lot of manual skills and and design the products? Well, I've been very practical in what we did very early. My brother and myself were, I've always been very creative, um, but not as hands-on as my older brother. He always uh -huh. worked on cars and rebuilt engines and did, worked on the old British cars and stuff. And I helped him as uh -huh. a kid. He's uh -huh. nine years older than me and he was a very skilled tradesman. Whereas I had a very practical approach to doing things. Um, I was I had a good vision. I had a very good vision for. I hate to say the future, but I, I I do. I've got a good perspective. I jokingly always say, if I was sitting at the side of the road and someone came up, say, hey, "What are you doing?" I say, "Well, I'm sitting because when the town gets built, this is where the bus stop will be." <laughs> it's a silly <laughs> joke. <laughs> it's just a perspective of you know I have yeah. an idea where things are going to be in the future, yeah. sort of, and um, it just it. it when I looked at the product, I'd spent some time in Denmark. Um, well, this is later in my life, really. But I learned in Denmark that uh, things are made to be very functional in their furniture. I had a friend who had a Scandinavian wood furniture in the 70s. And I noticed that every ounce of the furniture was used. It was very practically built. It folded up very well. It was very strong. And the Danish only appreciate great design and very functional design. And when I made the Pro Fitter, it was very important to me that every inch of it made sense. It was as light as it could be and as strong as it could be. And that there wasn't a bunch of fluff on it. Like, you know, every inch of that product is functional and every inch is used. 
There's nothing on it that is superfluous. And instead of adding a part, we learn to take away a piece to do the same thing. Um, on the first design, we added some parts to make some brackets to do things. And we said, no, no, take things off instead to do the same thing. And so it got lighter and lighter and better and better. And um, as I got better at making products, I realized always to don't make it more complex, make it simpler to achieve uh -huh. the same outcome. And that's exactly what I did on that product. So we did make a few changes very early and we made it much simpler and lighter. And uh -huh. it made it better. So it's all aluminum. It's all very strong. You know, the end caps are the bumpers. They hold the cords. They are a foot pad. Um, they, they, they encase the whole product and they hold it together. So, you know, it only weighs 25 pounds and we, there's nothing we could do to improve it more now. We've looked uh -huh. at it. We've looked at it three or four different times with designers. I've had people try to improve it and we look at their, and they don't get it. It's, it there's not a, additional improvements we can do. We could start with a new machine, but we'd continue to make the original one. Uh -huh. And the new one would just be different. It wouldn't be better. So. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then how was the evolution over the years? So like you started with the, that product and then you start selling and people start getting interested and then you develop other products. So how was that evolu evolution? Well, I think as you may have seen in the book I did with my mentor, Brian Tracy, it was called uh, Success Blueprints. I have a copy of it here. I'll just show you the cover really briefly. Brian was my mentor my whole life. He was from Edmonton, moved to San Diego. And there's actually 40 entrepreneurs each sub, uh, submitted a chapter. Uh, and then we were, could get our own sleeve. That's why there's a picture of Brian and myself on it. But without Brian, I would not have successfully started the company. Uh, I listened to his tapes. It's called um, uh, The Philosophy of Achievement probably 5,000 times while I drove all over North America in my car and going ski racing. But I came up with a slogan early in life, leading the world to better balance. And they also came up with another one called SAM. And it stands for stability, agility, and mobility. And what I realized early in the game is that what my objective was is not so much cardiovascular or strength, although I highly respect and know how important they are, but the importance of balance and stability in the age, in the, anyone's life. It doesn't matter about your age, it's about your stage of life. And uh -huh. whether you're trying for a gold medal at the Olympics or you're just trying to get out of your wheelchair because you're in a car accident. It doesn't uh -huh. matter where you're at in life, is that the role that balance and stability works in anyone's stage of life is very, very important. And it greatly influences how much success you can have with your cardio conditioning and your strengthening conditioning, again, regardless of what stage you're at or age. And so my, my patent or my trade name, sorry, is uh, we have a little guy named Sam, a character we created. And it says basically to practice stability in your daily living to improve agility at play and enhance mobility for life. So I trademarked that and that summarizes what our mission is. And the whole concept, um, as I'm gonna show you two little quick pictures here, you know, something has gone horribly wrong. We don't wanna be sitting uh -huh. all day. We know that's a bad thing. And above that is my little Sam character there. Uh, uh -huh. you know, waving at people say, hi, I'm Sam, and there's the little Sam logo. But the whole concept was that I realized that when I was a young man who was broken, lost his balance, my stage of life was I had no balance at 23. That's a pretty young age to lose my balance. So my goal was injury and recovery. And that was my first pillar. Then I was the World Cup ski racer and I wanted to make the Olympics and, you know, whether it was a World Cup race or the Olympics or whatever, is have a gold medal uh, a gold medal performance and for me or any parent with a young kid in high school or in club sports um you know they want their kid to do the best they can and and any night before a big race you have your you know your mental neck up issues you're nervous you're on a new hill a new place maybe you've got jet lag or or um a, a altitude acclimatization issues so our balance toys will really help a young person or any athlete get over those things and get the spidey senses tingling, ready for the big day. They just get it more ready. It's not about strength or cardio that day. They're in great shape. They just need to get their brain ready for it and uh -huh. their proprioceptive ready. And so that's our next issue is athletic and training. That was the second pillar. And I went through that in my thirties. Uh, my wife's pregnant in the last world championship I raced in and I came home and it was all about our family. You know, we had a young family. We wanted to be healthy. She wanted to recover from pregnancy. 
I stopped racing and now it was about family fitness. I was a third pillar. And then when I finally got back to working and I started sitting at a desk, I realized how important that eight hours a day was to change into something healthier than just working at a desk all day. And I realized that we could get balance and stability into the workplace, so active office, and change our work environment from a uh, negative liability into a healthy asset. And then that became my big mission was to, you know, what we call is make the active office. And that was made these, you know, those, these things called the active office, okay. revive your nine to five, another trademark I got. And these are things you can use as a hand squishy. This is a little foam uh -huh. thing that you go on top of your desk to remind you under your monitor to make your workplace a healthy environment. And that's when I got involved with Veridesk and designing things for the workplace, like the active office board. That's a standing platform that allows micro movements at the desk to enhance balance and stability at any age again, or any level. So even a senior getting out of a, a walker or off a walker can stand on our floating active office board because it's not a pivot board like all the other boards we make. It's a low level floating board that does not um, intimidate them. And it also for a person on a desk when they're doing a lot of heavy left brain work, it doesn't, um, it doesn't complicate the thought process. It's a wobble board takes an awful lot of horsepower mm -hmm. on the brain. And if you're mm -hmm. trying to work at a desk for a long period of time on, you know, heavy left brain things, the wobble board's too much, but a floating board you can stand on and get the micro movements of the hip and the core, just like a mother holding a baby. You know, it's not a lot of mm -hmm. movement, but it's just the human way. And that's, uh -huh. you know, our fourth pillar is active office. So those four pillars are what the company is built on and they all promote balance and stability, which enhances any human's ability to focus on cardio and strength as well. And we need all three of those pillars, uh, sort of the cardio strength and balance and stability are all required to maintain aging gracefully. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. sort of my mission is to help people maintain the balance and stability part so they can enhance their life as they age and also be respectful to cardio and strength. Because without those, of course, we know life is not very graceful. Yes, I loved your overview about like all the different stages of life and how it's actually important to work your balancing in every stage of your life. So like talking about physical therapy more specifically, you know, like each injury, um, for prevention, how important it is to work on balance. So you are waking your proprioceptors, so you prevent your ankles from straining, like from injury again. And um, when the in the last part of like the rehab process, we have to start working on that again. So I think it's it's huge for physical therapy. And I guess pretty much every clinic has a feeder first board or um, to work on balance. So I think that's awesome. Um, and then not just the normal patient, but uh, athletes also very important for their uh, rehab and go back to the sports and, and all of that. And then the active office idea, I think it's brilliant. I think like the first time we talked, you were, now you are standing up and I know last time you were on your board standing up and, and trying right. to be active because I, I think that's what's, it's wrong. Like. Everybody just spend the whole day sitting, don't move, not moving, and and it's just creating more and more pain and problems. So, I love that the 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 idea behind of just bringing more balance to life. Um, I think that's the a very cool uh, business model and and pillars to have. So, yeah. You know, um, I learned from a friend of mine named Dr. Joan Vernakis. She was from NASA. She's now in her probably nineties, just barely. She wrote a book called uh, Sitting Kills and Moving Heels, and she worked with all the astronauts in the space shuttle program. And John Glenn forwarded that book. But uh, she had mentioned to us that she uh, came to the realization that there's nothing more important to a human body than standing up in their waking hours every 30 minutes. So independent of movement or exercise, when she was helping the astronauts coming back from out outer space that had been in zero gravity, which is the the most extreme injury possible, zero gravity. So the whole body is bed rest, basically. Uh, not just limping with no weight on one ankle, but the whole body's limping, basically. That, you know, she put them on treadmills, she put them on all sorts of different things, on centrifuges, and she got me to build a centrifuge in my boardroom. So I actually had a centrifuge for almost a year in our boardroom, and my wife and myself 
would spit on a centrifuge at 1.7, 1.8 G every day for almost a year. And she told me I was probably that my wife and myself has spun on centrifuges probably more than any other people on the earth, which was very <laughs> interesting. It's on our website. You can go to our YouTube page and read about it and see her presenting in our office to a big group of people. It was quite fascinating. But anyways, uh, she said it's just standing up and creating downforce on a well-postured body helped the astronauts recover faster than any other exercise they could do, walking on a treadmill, doing squats, because going from sitting to standing allowed the organs to drop and the body would naturally compress, or, you know, the, the muscles would involuntarily tighten around the organs to stabilize them. The eyes and the ears and the body would just recalibrate with the adjusted positioning upright with the forces of gravity. And that 30 second to one minute exercise for the human body to go through was better than anything else. So if you're sitting at your desk and you're not sure what to do and you, you, know, you feel like shifting and you're getting sore, her answer was simply stand up, shoulders right, you know, maybe thumbs back, good posture, let your body do its thing for one minute. So I, whenever I'm doing public speaking, I just make everybody stand up about every 10 minutes and have them just stand up and listen for a minute and then let them do what they want. They can sit down or keep standing, whatever they prefer. But of course, I always make sure I do it at the very end because then I always get a standing ovation. <laughs> it's a little trick I accidentally learned one day. <laughs> You're probably very good at sales too, to the to grow your company. You, yeah. I, I like to educate people and really get these ideas into their head, right? Like, yeah. get the idea of proprioception. I want them to know what proprioception is. With the physiotherapist, the physical therapist, no problem. But the yeah. lay people and the other groups. If they don't know what we're talking about, like I make them do the physiotherapy, uh, the proprioceptive exercise, toe in front of, foot in front of each other, you know, arms crossed, head back, eyes closed, so they know what proprioception is. And then I get them to stand up and understand why that's so important. And so when I, they leave, they're educated because an educated uh -huh. person makes a good decision. Uh -huh. And again, your, your, your population of physical therapists have educated me well, so then I've developed good products for them because they've educated me well. Yes, awesome. Um, and I saw that you have a lot of different products that you develop right over the years. So you're just adding more balance tools and, and props uh, to help PTs pretty much? Yeah, I get approached by a lot of PTs that have developed products. Uh -huh. um, most recently, I just want to put a quick word in for this one. This is brand new. Um, it was developed by a, a vascular surgeon in this case, actually, but the therapists will like it very much. We launched this at APTA just recently. It's called FitFoot. And what it is, uh -huh. uh, as you can see, it looks like a little teeter-totter. And it's a light, lightweight, half a pound. And it's very simple. It looks like a cell phone when it's folded up, as you can see, like a large cell phone. Oh, like a, that's a, pretty iMac. cool. Very compact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very compact. Weighs half a pound. And with gravity, it works with gravity when you open it. The little blue clip just clips up. So now it looks kind of like a picnic table, a little tiny picnic well, table well. for a Barbie doll, right? And uh -huh. the top portion has late um, silicone strap bands on either side. So now it looks well, like a teeter-totter for a Barbie doll. And uh -huh. you put your foot on it and you can use it on a plane and get the vascular pump and the leg going. So whether you've had surgery in the knee or ankle and you're having uh, edema that needs to be pumped out well, well, or well, just well. anything, using it on an airplane and a car, it just gets a very low level pumping of the vascular pump going to the leg. It folds that down flat bad. again, comes with a little bag, oh, made man. in the USA. We assemble it here in Canada at Fitter. And uh, it's well. just, it's very basic, but it's beautiful because it's light, it's small, you can carry it anywhere. It can be used in a hospital bed. Anyone who's having, you know, not enough movement or swelling in the ankle, or they're trying to get more mobility, range of motion, stretching after an Achilles tendon rupture. It has so many applications, but it's just so simple. You know, and it's yeah. under $100, it's FDA approved, and it can be fully sterilized. So the the doctor that designed it originally, you know, knew about all the medical practices and has a bunch of research going, but when they took it to APTA, you know, there's so many more ideas that the therapist came up with for it. And I'm quite excited because I know it's a simple, useful product that will okay. serve a lot of different populations. Okay. So that's our new no. product for 2023. That's very nice, interesting. And then you can you can add the resistance, change the resistance. Yeah, to you that can one. lower it yeah. from two from two cords on each side to one, or we have some okay. heavier cords. You can go up to nine pounds. 
but uh, it's not really about resistance. It's more about just getting about that bastion moving. up moving, right? Uh-huh. If you just do that with a, a foot with no resistance, you don't get n- nearly enough uh, movement, well, enough re- uh, recruitment of the pump and the leg that muscles way. to get the pump the fully air. reacting. There's been uh-huh. a lot of research on it she's done that, you know, the difference between this and no resistance is quite significant for the amount of volume that pumps uh, out of the leg. Okay. Um, so it is significantly different than having nothing, no resistance at all. Okay. And just curious, can you using someone lying down and put it like against the wall or is it meant to just be sitting? No, you can hang it on a wall. Like uh, you can make a little strap for it and hang it uh-huh. on a hospital bed. Is But there there's a difference, of course, the, the there's flaps and the veins there that are one-way uh-huh. flaps, right? So the general comment is that pooling happens when you're standing upright or sitting when the limb is down. Uh, uh-huh. When you're laying down, there's a natural flow of the... Of the... Uh-huh. So it, it, yes, it helps certainly, but it's uh-huh. most effective when the, when the um, lower leg is vertical yeah. for the obvious yeah. reasons that you're trying to push yeah. the, the fluids up, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it yeah. works either way. And it's good because people that are sitting can just do it. Like if they're sitting at work, and they yes. need it to do, but they don't take breaks or time to like get up and exercise. At least they can sit there and move their ankles, yeah, be, their yeah, foot. It can and... be used under a stand, standing desk as well for one foot. It's not well, designed well. to be stand. It'll hold over a thousand pounds, but it's not designed to be stood on well, with well. all your body weight. It's well, certainly well. designed to be set, you know, used sitting, but you could put one foot on it at a standing well, well. desk. It simulates what used to be called a draftsman's block. In the uh-huh. 40s and 50s, a draftman would have a yoga brick style block of wood and it would be to put one foot up and they could kick at different heights or the other foot. So it would help a draftsman when he's standing at a drafting table change his posture and they were called draftsman's blocks back in the 40s and 50s. So we're uh-huh. not new to this stuff. It's all been there before. Or the brass uh-huh. rail on a bar in the 1890s. If a bar didn't have the brass rail, the cowboys wouldn't stand there and drink as much. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I know the other balance bars too. You create a lot of different ones, like the the rocker bars. Uh, the one the ones that look like a skateboard. You just yeah, that's called a bongo board, yeah. Yeah. So you just kind of start creating a lot of different uh, props and 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 things for balance. Well, things happen like the bongo board's a double black diamond board is very difficult. Uh, we have another one we made that was suitable for um, clubs that wanted a high-level product but didn't want to put a bongo board on the floor in a health club because it was just too dangerous. So okay. we developed one called the Extreme Balance Board. It's still quite hard. It's got a perturbation part to it, but it sits on the ground with a non-slip bottom and it rotates, but you wouldn't uh-huh. fall off of it. It's got a harder and an easier setting. Um and it's got a commission, it's got a perturbation factor to it, but like the bongo board that rolls up to a foot side to side and is free to move anywhere, this one stays still. So it's hard, but if you get on it and you can't handle it, you'll just step off. And yeah. then we have a lot of uh, what we call blue, black diamond boards that are hard. They're wobble boards, you know, multi directional round boards. Then the rocker board is sort of green blue, it's single plane board um, that they just, you know, you, you, you pivot the body instead of the board going 360 degrees around. So you can go all planes, but the body has changed its position so you can control exposure. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the AOB or the active office board is a floating board. So it's very low level. It's green level board. We've chosen to use the green, blue, black, and double black significations of a ski hill. Those are easier to follow, even for non-skiers. They're used in some Mm -hmm. other places, but they're easy for people to see, and that's just what we've used on all our boards to signify which ones are suitable for which level, skill level. Yeah. Um, the reason we've made all these boards is people have come to us and say, we need something for this segment, and you don't have anything that's suitable for that segment. Yeah, the, the, the biggest one was that low level, like really low level. I have a handicapped More sister-in-law well. that wouldn't get on any of our boards. She would I get will. on our lowest level board that we now make. So very there was horrible. a segment right there, and that's good for strokes and Parkinson's and other people that have low confidence and have a, a physical challenge that makes it hard for them to stand on a wobbling surface. Uh-huh. And that's why there's so many different boards. Okay. All different levels of difficulty and, and for all 
different types of patients. Yeah. Uh, that one with the skate looks pretty tough. That you have the yeah. roller. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do that probably. Um, well, but that, you, you, yeah. anyone could be taught within a reason. Like, yeah. you know, but if you look at people on wakeboards and, you know, snowboards and the things they do on hills, you mean they want something more advanced than a rocker board. Yeah. And, yeah. and then a senior citizen who's coming off of a hip replacement, they don't want a bongo board. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and you don't no. want them on a bongo board for that no. matter. <laughs> no. So, like, it's cool for like sports clinics, PT that work with like very high level sports patients. Can have these ones that are more advanced, and then like just the normal population stay with the normal balance level tools, uh, so their patients can use and benefit from. Yeah, it. and then the ones that I mentioned, like uh, for uh, athletics and training, if you're getting ready for a you know to get the spidey senses tingling for the night before a big event, if you're a high level athlete, they can do any of these, and they need the double black diamond ones. You know, to get the jet over the jet lag and to climate acclimatize to the location they're at, and be prepared, get ready for the you know, the, like the downhill race or the uh, you know the big water ski event the next day. Like they they need something very challenging to get their their uh, spidey senses back up to speed again, so they're ready for that big event the next day. We already know they're great athletes and their cardiovascular uh-huh. is in great shape, but uh-huh. sometimes acclimatization is not that easy. I know I was up you know going to race at 3,000 meters, at, you know, way up high in mountains and doing things that were very hard. And, you know, I flew in there from ocean level and in a World Cup race, and it's hard. You know, you're trying to ask your body to do something at a level that you're just not prepared and you haven't conditioned in those, you know, trained in those conditions before, and uh, all of a sudden you're there for one weekend. <laughs> yeah. And you got to so, perform at a high level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've, I've yeah. skied at over 125 miles an hour on skis. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was the that's... sort of the the top end speeds that we reached in World Cup speed skiing. So That's crazy. Well, the you trick got... is not to hit anything. <laughs> you know, don't fall either, but if you fall, don't hit anything. It's like if you parachute, you know, you don't want it to stop fast. You know, yeah. it's the problem is not parachuting. It's a rapid deceleration that's the problem. And in speed skiing, it's like, you know, a lot of speed sports, it's not about the speed, it's about rapid stopping that's the real problem. And, you know, don't fall and stay in control. If you do those two things, then you'll be okay. And that's why I'm standing here today. That's so scary. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I bet you need a lot of balance, needed a lot of balance training and and all proprioception to I did, do but those I came, things on bards. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I came from very poor balance and I found out I had a balance disorder. I took the DORA program for, you know, ADHD and I found out I had horrible balance uh, with my eyes closed. I was in the bottom five percentile, but with my eyes open, I was in the top three percentile of all people. But so I compensated. I learned to compensate a lot. Yeah. So, but we all, we all can learn to do that. We learn to use what we have you know, and work around what we don't have. But if we don't work it, we will lose it. And that's why yeah. working balance, it's just like a seatbelt or a toothbrush. Doing daily balance activities should be a mandate. You know, we should just choose to do it every day because it serves us that well if we do it. And that's my yeah. message, uh, Marina, to everybody is that if you neglect your balance on a daily basis, you'll pay the price for it. It'll come back and get you. If you just see it like a toothbrush and a seatbelt, and anything else you do on a daily basis, there's no reason you can't stand up and put your socks on in the morning free balancing. It took me a year after two operations last year. I had my knee done in 1979. I had it redone again, finally, in 42 years later. Uh, I had an Oxford knee put in, so a half a knee put in. And then 12, uh, six months later, the meniscus popped out of the fake knee, so I had to have it done again. And you know, it took me a year to learn to free balance on that, to put my socks on again. I just started doing that again. So now I'm able to balance freely on my, my you know, uh, half new knee. And um, I, I'm 63 and I learned to do that again. And I really encourage yeah. people to take whatever level of balance you have now and start improving it because it's not going to get better unless you work at it. And it'll serve you very well with every year that goes by. Absolutely. Aging, you got to be active as much as you can. Um, not just be sitting, but trying to be as active as you can, you're going to see the difference for sure. 
Yeah, and, and either you'll use our products or the philosophy now uh-huh. every day, or you'll be using it soon enough in the clinic when you get injured because your balance is diminished. So we'll be you seeing can, you one way or the other. Yes, you can <laughs> avoid it anyway, so you better just get started now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's right. It's like brushing your teeth, right? You're going to brush them yeah. because they're going to get filled with cavities, or yeah. you, know, you might as well do it while they're good. Yeah, So that, exactly. that's been our, our statement for you know 36 years. I've always said the same thing. You might as well start today. To, yesterday would be better, but today yeah. is good enough. So, yeah. 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 I guess you gave your words of wisdom to our audience. Um, yeah, uh, that's right. Before we wrap up, anything else that you want to um, mention? Um, any messages, any advice, anything that you want to talk to well, the audience? <clears throat> that was sort of, I've got a couple things I'll say, but that was the main one is that you really okay. look at your balance and stability as how important it is as every year, day and year goes by. Same with your loved ones and your family. Just don't under estimate how important it is for your kids even at a young age my kids grew up playing on fitness balls and exercise mats in the tv room and they were always playing on things just foam rolls not rolling just laying on them and playing on them and that was what they sat on you know and fitness balls and stuff like that that was their chair and <clears throat> what i um, like to mention to people is that you know Balance is the essence of movement, and movement is the essence of life. And if you want to enjoy quality of life, it, it, it involves being able to move. And you can't have successful movement without good stability and a good relationship with gravity. And so you need to keep your posture in mind, your movement in mind. And, you know, it's, our website's all about that. All our blog stories are about that subject matters around that of all levels of people. And that can be found at fitter one That's F-I-T-T-E-R, the numeral one. Dot com and we have both us and canadian sites and we ship you know north american wide every day and we're more about education than anything but we just want to help people you know understand how important this is whether they buy it through us or other people or make their own it doesn't matter but you know get the wisdom get the knowledge and and apply it to their daily lives yes yes absolutely um okay. Louis, before we um, finish, if people want to talk to you or learn more about you, your products, any other way that they can find you other than the, the website, anything else? Um, <clears throat> well, they can always email us at you know sales at fitter1.com. My own email is just my name, Stack at fitter1.com. You'll know the trend there, fitter1.com. It's also our toll-free. Uh, our toll-free number is 800 800- fitter one dot no 800 fitter one sorry you don't need the dot com on the end of that so yeah so everything about us is fitter one dot com or 800 fitter one and that's where i'm found as well that's my office i work there every day and i'm at most trade shows that we do is you know medical and physical therapy shows and um we have a catalog we can mail out um, but really in today's world you can download our catalog on our website so that's okay, the easiest well. way to see see our book and there's always a thing at the front of the catalog that I've written out, uh, you know, telling some timely story about today's world. And uh, <clears throat> so is the story of the chapter. My book is available on our website. <laughs> yes, you can also email the chapter, the, the copy of that chapter, if you'd like it sent to you. Um, I don't want to encourage too many people to email me, but, you know, they're welcome to. My name again, Lewis Stack, no punctuation, at fitter1.com. Is that a awesome. good answer? Yes, perfect. Uh, okay. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us and how you develop uh, the company and about the balance uh, story in your life and everything, how it evolved. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, Rina. And you know what? If I wasn't doing this, I'd be doing this. I love what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't work one day of your life. Yeah, exactly. I do what I love. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.